Okay, welcome to HTML exercise number two. In this exercise, we're going to go a little bit further in terms of exploring HTML. Keep in mind here, first of all, I've started a new page, linked it and from my instructional design menu, called it HTML exercise two. Just as a refresher very quickly, we know that this is our toolbar. This little button here toggles the advanced toolbar on and off. And as another refresher, this is our visual tab. That's where I'm at right now. But I can also flip over to my text tag, uh, remembering that text is going to be the place where I enter HTML code. I'm going to pop back to my visual for a moment here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now I know I gave you on uh, another page the HTML code for this exercise simply because a lot of it is tedious to type and you can certainly copy and paste. But before you do that, I would challenge you to try to do it uh, with me in terms of step by step so that you get a better understanding of how it's working and what it's looking like here. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to ins uh, insert what's called a horizontal rule. And these are just simple uh, straight lines straight across. We could get embellishing into embellishing the lines, etc. But for our purposes, they're just used as a visual break in the page. This is one of the really old tags that has been around in HTML since its beginning. And it at one point was the primary way to break up blocks of text. I'm going to pop over to my text uh, tab because this is a uh, an HTML tag that I'm going to enter. So I'm going to go ahead and click on enter. Note that as I'm entering here, because I don't have content here, I can enter a few different times. I can break this up in terms of visual uh, layouts here, but it doesn't necessarily impact my main page at all. And before I take a, another step here, taking a look at this little code, it's the ampersand NBSP um, with a, uh, uh, <clears throat> semicolon here. The NB stands for non-breaking and the SP stands for space and the little ampersand is just the code that that goes along with it. So this is a space in your web page. This is the code for a space. So now let's talk about putting in a, a horizontal rule. The code tag for H uh, for horizontal rule is the less than HR greater than HR, excuse me, less than HR greater than. And then in order to close the tag, just as we've talked about before, I need to do the same tag and close it with a forward slash. The difference with this particular tag is the fact that there's nothing that's going to go in between. We don't want words. We don't want any kind of, um, caption or image or anything like that. The tag just simply is an opening of the HR and a closing of the HR. And then if I pop over here to my visual, that indeed is what I've got, is that visual HR line. Now, the HR tag can also be abbreviated or shortened. If you take a look, as soon as I pop back, notice that it did it for me automatically, only because WordPress knows that that's the actual shortened tag of um, the horizontal rule. So let me highlight for you by typing one more time. This is what I had originally typed. This is the opening of the tag. This is the closing of the tag. The shortcut for some tags can be abbreviated in terms of the front end of the tag, space, and then the forward slash. And <clears throat> modern HTML and browsers understand that that's closing the tag. So once again, if I pop back over here, I've got a double line. And indeed, if I pop back here, WordPress has gone ahead and uh, shortened it up. Another example of how just because visually I've broken up my code areas here doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way it's going to display here. Over here in my text area, if I had my space pieces in place, um, then I would see a difference in the line areas, right? So. Even though I've got a, oops, a chunk of space here, I'm going to delete that, right? Even though I've got a chunk of, of space here, it doesn't mean it's visually going to show. I would have to have a piece of HTML code to actually break it up, okay? 
Um, so hey, here's a really super easy drop dead way of doing an H, uh, a horizontal rule tag. Um, back here in uh, the visual part of our editor, there's this uh, handy dandy little button that says horizontal line. And of course, if you click it, it just pops a horizontal line in there. However, I did want you to see what it would look like in terms of code, uh, because I think that uh, it becomes an important skill set. Now, let's move on to our next skill set here. Um, <clears throat> I am just kind of opening up some spaces here on my um, text editor to visually be able to pop some code in here. And what I'm going to do now is now I'm going to leverage the uh, pieces that I had previously typed out for you guys, but I do want to explain them. Once again, I'm in my text area. Let me just show you very quickly. If I pop this into my visual area, here's that little bit of code. It wouldn't do anything for me. And that's because the visual displays kind of a what you see is what you get. So that's not the place to put HTML ta uh, text. I want to be under my text tab and I'm going to now paste this code here. Now let me explain to you what is happening here. This div stands kind of like for a division and that's how HTML opens and closes boxes or um, surrounding elements. So here what is happening is, is that the div is opening and the div is closing. We call those div tags. The div is opening here and the div is closing down here. However, in addition to just opening, I've got some other content in here. Notice that I've identified it as an ID and this particular div is being called text style and the reason why that becomes important is later on in more advanced web design pieces you would take that entire text style out to a totally different document and define it in terms of its style and color etc. We're going to do all of that here. As a side note in terms of the technicality when we embed the style here right within our HTML document, remember that's where we're at, when we embed the style here this is called inline styling. So we've named the box, called it text style, and we're going to say that its style equals a font size. This is <clears throat> the selector and um, there are different HTML selectors and this one governs the size of your character font and in this particular case here's it's separated by a colon and here is the value that goes along with that particular selector in this case I'm using M's and if you recollect back from your reading of your font article you know that an M is roughly the uh, size of an M, the letter M, in your base font. Notice that this particular document doesn't refer to a base font, it doesn't talk about um, what kind of font that is, etc. I'll show you where all of that's governed later. That gets into some fairly high-end um, coding, so we're not going to go there just yet, but I'll certainly show you where it is so that you can play with it. The next um, selector is the color. And again, this happens to deal with the text color, not background or any uh, other pieces of color on the page. And it's always written in a hexadecimal code. Um, sometimes um, you'll see it in other uh, types of things. You might see it in words. Um, you might see it in uh, shorthand hexadecimal code. But generally speaking, you'll find it written in hexadecimal code. Um, the next piece is the font weight, which is equal to bold in this particular case. And again, the selector is separated by the, uh, the value with the um, uh, colon here. It ends in a semicolon, and because this is one giant long phrase, the entire thing is encapsulated in quotation marks. Now, HTML is not very forgiving, and that means that if, in fact, you are typing this out by hand and you miss a colon, 
you miss a semicolon, you miss, um, you know, one letter, it's just not going to work. So that's one of the reasons why I've gone ahead and given this to you in terms of copying and pasting. However, let's take a look at what this looks like here. And so there indeed it is. This is a font that is three M's and the color red and bold. And in truth, it's not really three M's, right? If we take a look back here, notice that I have this phrase 1.2 M. If I were to change that and put the 3M in there, that's huge. That's probably nowhere near what I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that back to 1.2. And, and if you remember from your font article, you can also define pixels. Um, you can define uh, letter sizes in terms of Xs. There's a couple of different ways to manipulate the sizes of fonts. The advantage of doing an M or an X as opposed to a pixel. A pixel is a simple dot on the screen, whereas the M's and the X's will be um, dynamic. If your um, browser or screen is of a higher resolution, proportionately the M's will scale up and down, um, similar to the idea that if you're looking at this on a phone versus on a on a full-scale computer, it will proportionally resize itself, whereas pixels don't do that um, in the same fashion. They will resize themselves simply because a phone will have a smaller number of pixels um, and be on a smaller platform. Let's move on here. I'm going to go ahead and update that um, just because that's always good practice, right? What if, in fact, um, I wanted to get rid of this chunk of information here. Now <clears throat> notice that I'm going to just cut that out so that I don't actually lose it. I took out the attribute of bold and if I come back here indeed it is bold. Even though I've got the word bold in there that's not what it is. Keeping in mind that this text is the content that goes between the opening tag and the closing tag or the sandwich I'm going to put that back in there simply by um, pasting it back in. So now let's move on to another piece of um, code. Um, I have gone ahead and once again added <clears throat> this into your um, code page. Now notice I'm going to start after this div, right? This opens it, this closes it, and now I'm starting a whole new one. I'm going to go ahead and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a nice clear space. You don't have to do it this way. You just have to be outside that tag, but I want to do that so I can have you focus in on just what I'm showing you here. So I'm going to do that there. And there okay so let's focus in on this this little piece of text here advanced insert of a styled box he's just kind of hanging out by himself he's not inside a div tag which means he would take on the default of a paragraph here we have another div that opens and here's the div tag that closes it notice that I could separate the div tag away from the body um, just so um, I can visually see kind of like my sandwich piece here Here's the opening, oops, here's the opening piece and here's the closing piece. But by uh, my putting in these extra spaces and opening them up and stuff, that's not going to impact the way it looks back on the page because um, uh, unless I had an HTML code that actually forced it to, to put in a, a white line here, it wouldn't do that. So this div opens and we're calling this, we're giving this div box a name called highlight and we are saying that it's style. Here I'm giving it a width of 99%, a height of 10%, and that's just styling the box itself. <clears throat> I'm giving it a background color this time. Notice the difference here in terms of background color. Let me zip up and show you over here. Notice that this one was color. This is the attribute or the selector just for font color, right? This is the attribute or, excuse me, um, selector for background color. Notice here this hexadecimal number is shortened. That means that even though hexadecimal numbers come in sixes, 
like six digit kinds of th combinations. If they are all of the same digit, they can collapse down into three. I'm giving it now a border style of solid and a border color of, again, another collapsed um, <clears throat> hexadecimal number. And I'm giving it a padding of two pixels. Now, same deal as before. I could go with M's. I could go with X's. Um, padding, I find particularly much more flexible to go with pixels at this point, mainly because padding takes on what we call, um, we have to take into consideration what is called the box model. And so the size of the box is dependent on the content of the box and it can kind of get hairy mathematically if we start fussing around with M's, X's in combination with percentages. So I want a hard-coded padding here. I'm going to pop over to my visual to see what that looks like. So here in my hard-coded visual, again, remember this little guy? He's sitting out there by himself. Let me show you over here. Advanced, he's sitting out there by himself. Here this style is saying that the box is going to be 99% of the overall. It's going to be 10% height. Its background color is going to be this E, 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 right? And that's what this background color is here. And the border color is going to be 999. And the padding is going to be two pixels around. Now, <clears throat> um, let me go ahead and update that super quick. And uh, some of the things that you can do to play around with this kind of stuff is, is this. In terms of changing different kinds of things, this, this font color up here, quite frankly, you didn't need to write an entire um, HTML tag for that because you could have gotten away with just simply picking a text color here. Certainly in terms of, of this, you could have done this as a highlight and done it as an H tag and then given it a color as well and you could have achieved pretty much the same kind of effect here. But if you wanted to get into doing a color that perhaps wasn't there on this particular list, um, or if you wanted to uh, get involved in doing different sizes like this, you'd actually have to go out to HTML. So let's go ahead and play with that a little bit more. If I wanted to take this particular text and say make this a different color, or I'm sorry, let's try the background here because that will be very different, right? So I'm going to pop over to my HTML. And uh, the secret here is this. Of course, this is the background color, right? As opposed to the font color here. And how do you know what these HTML or hexadecimal codes look like? Well, there are tons of places on the internet that you can go and do um, a quick lookup. You can get um, hexadecimal colors uh, for everything on the internet in terms of all of these colors. Now, there's a whole notion that speaks to the idea that there are what we call web safe colors that are standard amongst all different browsers under uh, all circumstances. And then in more modern times when we're dealing with uh, cascading style sheets, we've gotten a lot more color choices. So we'll see a lot more variants here, right? So let me pop back and just explain that one more time here. If I go to visual, Notice here that if I highlight this, I only have certain colors. And the reason that is, is that these are going to be web safe colors across all browsers. That's what WordPress is going to allow you to do. However, I know that WordPress is going to be viewed in a browser that can readily interpret those different types of colors. So I can then start to play with um, HTML or hexadecimal codes directly here. And so in terms of my background color, instead of it being this color, which is the, um, the light gray, I can come out to um, a, a color picker. I'm going to go ahead and go to a yellow. And I'm going to find something not, not terribly obnoxious here. And I can see that this particular shade of yellow, that might even be a bit too dark. But I'm going to highlight that code. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to pop back over here and now I'm going to simply substitute it. Remember though that you need to be careful about your colons, your semicolons. It's either totally correct or it's totally incorrect. If you miss something, if you erase something, HTML will not be forgiving in that regard. And now if I take a look, here is indeed my um, newly colored code uh, box. 
And so that is one thing that you can do in terms of putting um, different kinds of um, <clears throat> boxes into your uh, pages. And um, that's kind of fun to play with. I'm going to go ahead and click on update. And my last little piece here is going to be uh, the same kind of box. But now I'm going to actually get fancier and, and um, uh, copy it. I'm, uh, by the way, what I'm doing here, if I didn't show you earlier, I've just got a notepad running on the side with all of my code pieces. If you go to the HTML code page, you'll know that that's what I suggested. Copy and paste this out to a word pad or a notepad so that you can just readily copy and paste this right in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. Now I'm going to come back. Notice I'm on the visual. I'm going to deliberately make a mistake. I'm on the visual and I'm going to paste my code in there and nothing happens. This is a mistake once again because if I'm pasting HTML text it needs to be under my text area. So now I'm going to come here into my text area and once again I need to I'm going to collapse those out a little bit more here. I need to just open that up. I need to make sure that I am not within another div. So I'm going to close that down a little bit so that you can visually see. This is my first div opening and closing. Here's my second div opening and closing. And now I can pop in my third div. Once again, this little phrase is kind of sitting out there by himself. Here's the opening of the div. Here's the closing of the div. And then again, I've got another little phrase that's hanging out by himself. Here I've kind of combined combinations, right? I've got my style, which is 99%. Height is 10%. My background color, I'm going back to that default gray. My border style solid, border style color, excuse me, border color padding. But now I'm, I'm combining the font sizes and the colors, the font weight, and then I've got some generic text here. So I'm going to pop over to visual and see what that looks like. Okay, so now this is again another uh, option that I can use. So if I wanted something besides the H1 through 6s that I get up here, if I wanted something special beyond this particular color palette over here, um, if I wanted, you know, boxes like this, that's when I would want to understand how my code works and I would want to build up a little library of HTML code that I might want to use over and over again. Now there are definitely much more sophisticated words, ways, excuse me, to apply HTML code. This is kind of doing it by hand, which is perfectly fine if you're only doing it to a couple of different pages. For the purposes of our class, Instructional Design, that's exactly the way I would want you to do this. However, let me take you over and show you <clears throat> the CSS style page that governs your entire site. Um, actually, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to pick that up in the next video.